All right, all right. We are back once again with the old behavior. This is the old Bill, and welcome to the Chill with Bill show. Yo, yo, yo. We got the man guide. The man guide. I listen to feminism, and my life is ruined. <laughs> yo, we're going to see start seeing so much more of this. So much more. I've got people that I know in my life, right, that are like in their 40s now. And uh, I have... I have heard them say this. I have heard, I am tired of feminism. I am, uh, it was a scam. (laughs) I'm tired of working. I'm tired of doing all this by myself. Like I hear this stuff all the time now from real people. Not, not, you know, not just like the YouTube gossip. Right. So, uh, we don't, we're going to be seeing a lot more about this, but let's go ahead and get into it. Man guy. I wasted 10 years on feminism and woke culture. And when did you realize that it was a lie? Probably like a year ago. A year ago. That's that's the problem. What what made you like realize? And it's, it's, it's interesting. Like I started really listening to Andrew Tate's like long form (laughs) content. Yeah. Nice. And understanding truly what he meant. Yeah. And it really changed everything for me. Okay. How I viewed men and women and relationship so you think the biggest lie of feminism was a lie i guess yeah Fair unfortunately enough. what's the biggest lie that feminism sells women in your opinion that women don't need a man i can't stop crying <laughs> um i'm happy and i love my life really but i feel so goddamn lonely and it terrifies me everyone's getting married or having kids and starting a new chapter in their life with their friends and what that's a whole contradiction i'm happy i love my life but i'm lonely and it's terrifying and i'm terrified like that's a whole a whole contradiction right no and i'm just here on my own in my own home paying your own bills and and surviving and surviving that's right barely (laughs) and i don't know what to do you know I don't know if do. it's just me you who's just don't want to do it. experiencing this, but I just feel so lonely, <laughs> and it's scary. I've done really well for myself in my career, and I'm ambitious, and it seems to be something that is, like, desired because it's like, I don't know, a prize to be won. <laughs> But then once I actually open up in like in the dating world and like let someone in, then they get bored or they just they don't see the value. And I was passed up on an opportunity this week as well. Um, and then also the guy I was dating, um, it just I guess didn't work. It's crazy that women will spend all this time and energy, right? They'll go to school, get all the degrees, right? They'll go to work. They'll submit to their boss, do whatever they're told to do for a paycheck, right? And for the potential of like moving up in the ranks, right? But they won't do nothing. (laughs) They won't put in no effort to try to figure out what a man actually wants to try to become the things that a man wants. Who, who, you know, this, this whole like, I for I, I guess nobody really told them right like they said oh yeah go out get you man you can have it all you know you get a job be a career woman blah 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 who told them that they could do all this and then get a man that's actually gonna want them right like I, like it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense and and do people not like reflect as they go through life how do you get like through your 30s and stuff and then you just figuring it out like you don't ponder any of this stuff (laughs) modern women are rapidly starting to realize what men have been saying all along feminism is a toxic trap that has ruined society and turned men and women against each other hell it's even turned women against each other and against their own nature and now we're seeing the effects of it all over social media These women can't help themselves. When they are desperate, lonely, and single, social media is the last place to turn to. And it isn't pretty. Yo, social media is a trap. You guys know that, right? Like, it's a whole op. This is a whole, like, setup for destruction, control, manipulation to get the dollars in. You know what I mean? Like, how do you not notice this? But to be honest, it's hard to feel sympathy for these women when this is how men have been treated the whole time. 
Take a look at some of these comments from a random post in the feminism subreddit and you'll see what I mean. It's as if they all had a meeting and set the bar low. Many men are really very stupid, yet they also tend to think they are more intelligent than women. So pathetic. Not to mention disloyal and untrustworthy. Men are better in the bedroom as they age, but they are still abusive, immature, jealous, and entitled. Unfortunately, in my experience, I never met a man who didn't felt he had to have the last say, to be honest. I get along with men acquaintance, but yes, most of them see women as a service or such. That's so disappointing. I mean, <laughs> most, I mean, like, I don't understand how she can even say this, right? Like, y'all treat men like ATMs, right? Like, they're just a means to an end. But the women don't notice this, right? They just, if a man's got standards, right? If he has, like, requirements, right? If I'm going to put all this into you, I'm going to, you know, go out and work and break my back, you know, bring bring home the bacon, get the, you know, be masculine. I'm going to lead, you know, I'm going to be emotionally intelligent and, like, you know, all the things that you want, right? Like, what exactly are you doing, right? <laughs> It's, it's hella funny. Ho math has a great explanation. You know, men just bring all these things, pour into you, bring this and that, you know, the money and the, the, uh, the, all, all the things, right. The, the stoicism and the emotional intelligence and the da, 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 da. he does all this and he puts it on the table and she just is the table somehow. <laughs> but before we go any further, I'm going to pick today's comment of the Let's day. See it. Shout out to Omar Brown, who said, I always love hypocrisy, yep. always yelling that they are equal or superior to men, but could never actually go to a man and approach them to ask for their number, but instead right. always run to Twitter or Instagram or TikTok, yelling about nobody's asking me out. Right. And these girls will say, oh, it's up to the man. You know, I ain't going to ask no man out, da, 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 all this stuff. Right. But you're so superior or you're equal or whatever. Right. But you, you can't ask a man. Out. You if you ask most women, they'll tell you they want a man to ask them out. Why? Because he needs to show leadership dominance. He needs to be able to get out of his comfort zone, this, that and the other. But aren't we equals? Like, don't y'all make more money than men now? Don't you have more education, supposedly? Right. More degrees and all this like stuff. Like, how do you, how, what exactly, how does this supposed to work? You're supposed to like be better than men in all these aspects somehow, but then the man is supposed to still cater to you. Like that does, it's like, it, 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 it's like if you are in the wild, right? And you are the alpha, you're the pack leader, but, but somehow <laughs> somehow you supposed to do all the things for like it, it just doesn't make any sense right like the math ain't mathing and i mean I, I talk to women all the time and most women want the same thing they want a man to come in to take care of them to pay most of the bills you know they'll say oh i, I don't mind going 50 50 or you know it should be equal what they want is they want to be included. They want you, they want to have some say. They want to feel like they're in some kind of control. But when the check comes, then it's like, right? Like, I mean, we all know this. this, this you summed up a lot into this one comment. So well worded, my man. And they're going on social media to complain about what they have caused. Right. So please don't forget to reach out to my email to claim your $5. As always, guys, I'm going to pick one comment from each video. It may be the funniest, the most liked, or one that moved me. So don't forget to leave a comment, and you may be our next winner. Maybe. Hit the like and subscribe buttons, too, as it Come helps on, out the channel bro. a ton. So now let's get back to the video. I think we will be sad like Embrace your masculinity. This is what modern women have been reduced to. Drinking box wine, filing papers until 1am for a boss who doesn't respect her time, and right. the constant man bashing because Chad didn't text her back. It's a terrible and cold existence. And women chose this for themselves. It doesn't matter how much cope they try to pour on everything. No amount of it will cover up the truth. And that truth is that modern feminism has completely ruined the lives of countless women. This isn't a shock. 
it's not as if feminism is a solid philosophy and it's just been taken out of context by too many people. Feminism, at its core, features some of the most damaging and dangerous ideas to modern society. Why? Because they perpetuate a gender war between men and women right. that is currently plummeting the birth rate in Western-influenced countries. It's true, right? I think we're at like 1.2 or 3 or something like that, and you need like a 2 point something to be able to... I can't remember, I did a video on it, but like, it the, the population growth is like steadily declining, you know, if you... If you look at many people, they got one, two kids, maybe, you know, and then the nuclear family is completely destroyed, right? And then, you know, of course, inflation, right? So things are so expensive. If we actually still did the nuclear family thing, life would be a whole lot easier. You know, yes, both parents would probably still have to work, you know, in most cases, both parents do work. But like if the nuclear family was really like legit, you know what I mean? We would be able to do things a lot easier. And at the same time, if we had multi-generational dwellings, oh my God, <laughs> like, like that's going to, that's the future, right? That that's, that's the future of, of families, I believe is multi-generational dwelling because it's the only way you're going to be able to afford the, it's not like the prices are going down, right? It's not like prices are just going to go down, 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 down on anything. I mean, maybe we have a housing collapse, but I don't, I don't know. Is that? Somebody would have to tell me if they think that's happening. Do we see $200,000 homes ever happening again? Probably not in most states, right? But what is it that feminism teaches that is so dangerous? Feminism teaches women to not need men. Right. Humanity has managed to go from hiding in caves to building the James Webb Space Telescope through cooperation. Who did that? Humans are an ultra-social species, perhaps the most social species on the planet. The environment in which our ancestors lived was harsh and deadly. If a lion didn't eat you in your sleep, maybe a poisonous snake would bite you and your leg flesh would slowly rot away from necrosis. <laughs> if you were not working constantly to feed your tribe, there was a very real possibility that you would all die of starvation before the winter snows thawed. Disease, tribal conflict, predators, the elements, you name it. Back in the day, nature was out to kill us. And cooperation was the only hope we had of survival. And who changed all that? Men. Men cut down the trees, processed the wood, built the buildings, built the air conditioning, right? Created the human resources job, right? Like, men did all these things to make life easier for men, and, but mainly for women, right? Because men who we do things for women. Most of our ambition comes from the inspiration that we get from women, right? We want to do these things because we want to have a family. We want to, you know, raise kids. We want to pass on legacy, right? And so men go out and we do all these things. The, the running joke is, is if men didn't have women and didn't have inspiration from women, we would all live on a, a a mattress on the floor next to our Glock nine millimeters and a, and a you know six pack of beer with the TV right like but because we have women we got to go out we got to work so we can buy the house so she can make it a home so we can sleep on mattresses and have food in the refrigerator right and and, and like somebody told me once oh a man the man gets a man cave the woman gets the house crazy I can't believe people still think that way. But the, the, the point is, is like we're supposed to inspire each other. Men are supposed to inspire women and women are supposed to inspire men to do great things. Right. Like we want to do things for our women. This, this is not abnormal. Right. But if if women are don't need no man, <laughs> just want a man. I mean, I, you can you should want a dog because that's about the same thing. Men don't want to be with women who want to be with them. Men want to be needed, right? Like we have a purpose to serve, right? And if we have a woman who needs us, who cares about us, who is down for us in a major way, we will kill ourselves. We'll go to war. We'll break our backs. We'll fall off buildings. We'll do, we'll work in coal mines and oil fields. Like we'll do the worst of the worst of the worst just for the love of the women that we have right like we'll do that 
we'll do that. But now, you know, we raise in Sorry Boys, and so they prefer to sit at home and play Xbox and not go out and socialize and meet women. And, um, you know, it's it's not the same. What do they say? Uh, strong men make good times. Good times make weak men. Weak men make hard times. Hard times make strong men, right? Like, uh, it's what it is, I suppose. Men and women had to take full advantage of our natural strengths in order to survive. And we had to learn how to use them in complementary ways. We had to fight together, and against all odds, we succeeded. Men and women successfully became the masters of nature, and we did it together. Now, fast forward to the present day, it's become a cancelable offense to even say what a woman is. There are apparently a hundred different genders. Men are pigs, misogynists, and abusive narcissists. To be a housewife is to be subservient to an oppressive dictator. Under this kind of totalitarian feminist rhetoric, women have been driven away from their families and their homes and into the office to compete with men. Feminism went from appreciating men and supporting them to aggressively spitting in their faces saying, we don't need you and we never did, with a kind of child. I kind of wish you would take all these like hardcore feminists and put them on an island. Like give them the whole continent, like Australia or whatever, someplace warm, you know, where they won't die over the winter, right? And then just have at it, see what happens. Call me when you need me, right? And then see how long it takes for that first phone call. You know what I mean? Like truly see what happens to them, right? And I don't mean that be, like to be mean. I'm saying like it would be great to see a social experiment. Now I know uh, we we've you go on YouTube and you can see Bear Grylls the island. You can see what happens when they take ten women and put them on an island and try try to fend for themselves or whatever. You know, but that's ten women, right? Like, you know, most of them probably didn't have any skills and or very little skills. And so you know, it's like a it, it's it's not a great you know. Uh, the experiment is not that awesome, right? You got to get women in there who got some skills, right? It, it'd be like, I mean, you could drop daddies into daycare and I think we'd figure it out. There's plenty of movies about that. But in general, like if you don't give them any skills, you know what I mean? You, you, you're making a person start from over, from, from fresh. And that that's pretty dangerous. But if you took a bunch of women and stuck them into a bunch of feminists, specifically the ones that don't need no men, and stuck them in an area, I wonder how many of them would feel the same way i feel like feminism only exists in the comfort of the society that men created right because you know the fact that women say they don't need no men is only because society provides men for all the things that they need men for handyman, carpenters automobile mechanics police officers firemen like all these things that they need men for men exist and are paid to serve the women that say they don't need them Right. So that's why they don't need a man in the house. But if you took all that away, <laughs> just took all that away, then what happens? And that's just if you put a bunch of women on a continent, right? Don't, never mind put them on a continent with a bunch of men who are doing their own thing, right? Because we know that would be an issue, right? Childish ungratefulness. The same beautiful cooperation that allowed humans to reach the stars is dead and feminism killed it and burnt the corpse. Feminism is a scam. A few years ago, I was an angry, blue-haired feminist. I once believed that male privilege was real and that I was a victim of the wage gap. Now that I understand the true motives of feminism, I know that this could not be further from the truth and that modern day feminism is a war on true masculinity. Before women had the right to vote, most were stay-at-home wives, which meant they weren't working jobs and couldn't be taxed. Our overlords didn't like that. Rockefeller started funding feminist campaigns in media and as a consequence of the movement, women started entering the workforce and leaving the home. Children would then be separated from their parents and sent to Rockefeller funded schools to be indoctrinated by the state. All of this ultimately disrupting the family unit at its core. Feminism is defined as the belief in social, economic and political equality of the sexes. But in the West, I must ask, what rights do men have that women don't? And it's not equality anymore, it's equity. They want to get paid the same for not doing the same. They just want to they just want everything to be the same regardless of the effort put in like that's not equality equality is you know is when you have 
access to, the ability to, to be able to make the decisions to, right? It doesn't mean that no matter what your effort, that the outcome is the same. I don't get the same outcome as the next dude if I'm not working as hard or harder than him. Like, so why would women? That doesn't make any sense. Modern feminists are convincing women that hookup culture, using hormonal birth control, and not shaving is liberation. That toxic masculinity is prevalent and the patriarchy must be dismantled. Through movies and media, we're taught that work Working for the man, climbing the corporate ladder and paying tax is more empowering and valuable than raising the next generation. Women have lost touch with our natural loving instincts and birth rates are plummeting. Men and even, you know, I don't want to sit there and say that all women need to be in the kitchen or anything like that. But if you sit back and you ask most women, I mean, there, there are a lot of them who want to work and who are just workaholics, workaholics. And most of those, I would look at the way they were raised. I would look at that foundation and see what, um, what that was like, because they probably weren't in a home with a feminine mother who was able to, you know, submit to her husband, husband, and who was able to raise the family and, and be the nurturing woman and the feminine woman and, and, you know, play that role, right? I would say they probably weren't raised by a mother who did that. Um, there was probably some other issues, some dynamic issues in the relationship that caused them to have this like tendency to want to like work and work and work and work and work and work, right? So there are some women that like that, but very, very, very few women, <laughs> Very, very few women are like that, right? Even the ones that say they are, a lot of them are not. Because if you really put them to the test, right, like then, then the true nature comes out. And at the end of all that, they still don't want it to split the check, right? Men and women are not the same. And by protesting for equality of outcome rather than opportunity, feminists are demonizing and emasculating. At its core, feminism is a hateful ideology that's driven in spite, resentment, and jealousy. Like any ideology, it's driven along by a few influential individuals. These individuals bring their own emotional baggage into the world where it infects tens of millions of women. Feminism teaches women to stop being mothers. This is an issue that feminism has so far completely failed to get past. And, and realistically, how crazy would it be if men went out and actually started fighting for true equality? See, because they say that men make all the rules, right? We make all, we run all the businesses, we make all the laws and stuff. What if all of a sudden we just said, you know what? Let's just make a change, okay? Uh, all the women, y'all have to participate in the draft. Otherwise, you're going to get fined 25, or what is it? $25,000 or $250,000, whatever it is, right? Um, and potential arrest, and you don't get any college grants uh, or no, um, no uh, educational assistance, right? Like, what if we said, um, you know what? X amount of women have to go work in oil fields, coal mines. Um, they got to go on skyscrapers, wash windows. Like, you got to drive buses, and you got to do, 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 do. Like, all these, like, pretty boss bees or whatever, they're only boss bees in an air conditioned space. They're only boss bees in an office uh, over the telephone where they get to, you know, boss people around or whatever. But if they're grunting it, right, if they're out there turning a wrench, right, there are very few women who want to do that. Very few. And I, I would just say, take most of these women who are in these offices and say, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do it 50-50. 50 50 you got to do this if i'm going to do this you got to do this and watch how quick the feminine would just the feminism would just leave their souls like instantly motherhood and mothers are a constant pain in the ass for feminists because they stand against practically everything feminism is about right. a feminist will tell you that it's okay for a woman to be a mother because feminism is about equality don't you know this is this is a weird image, right? So this kid's sitting there like crying and doing whatever. She's laughing. He's laughing too. <laughs> like like they're like joking and she's like supposedly not like it's a weird image. I'm just but as we've seen countless times, when a woman actually has the balls to declare that she wants to be a mother and homemaker, that's when you see the true colors of feminism. Why are you smoking? The shame, the, kids? the guilt, the manipulation, and the sharp female aggression. The sisterhood quickly becomes an aspiring mother's worst nightmare. Because feminism is like a toxic cult that demands complete and total obedience. If every woman were a feminist, humanity would die out within two generations. Exactly. But if feminism is so against mothers, then why are we seeing such a sharp rise in the numbers of single mothers? This is why. Feminism teaches women to be shamelessly sexually empowered without educating them about morality and responsibility. Oh.
Thanks to feminism, this society is a society without shame. Even the good kind. And you know what? I can back this up um, because mo like so many of the mothers that I know talk about the importance of teaching their daughters about birth control, like getting them on birth control early, you know what I mean? To make sure that they don't have kids, they don't get pregnant, they don't, you know, birth control, birth, like it's such a big deal. And it's like, yo, <laughs> why are you teaching your kid about birth control? Why aren't you teaching your kid about abstinence, right? You know, marriage before sex, like why are these, why is it, <laughs> this hormonal chemical thing, right? <laughs> As opposed to a, a solid moral foundation, right? That, that, I mean, that's wild. And now we have rampant sexual promiscuity. Most of the women banging chads who will never commit to them, right. and many women becoming pregnant because of it. Right. It's either that, or women are intentionally becoming single mothers with a misguided idea that they don't need men and can do everything by themselves. That is, Good until luck. reality hits. Do any other single 32 year old women get depressed, extremely depressed around the holidays? Sure. Or is it just me? Nope. It doesn't bother me any other time. I'm fine. But like come November all the way to like February, I'm like, okay. My, all of my siblings from 16 years old to 40 something years old all have somebody okay they have boyfriends girlfriends they're married they have children like families and what happened to you then how is it that all of them ended up okay and you ended up not that's what i would want to know and there's Brittany, alone with her french bulldog that she's codependent on <laughs> <laughs> they walk in the front door with their family and their kids and they're, oh, Merry Christmas, blah, blah, blah. And then I show up by myself. Hey, Britt. I appreciate my family because they include my dog and everything as if he's my kid. Like, I'm truly grateful, but like, fuck. I'm confused. Did she say, didn't she say single mother? Maybe not. That is until reality hits. Do any other single 32-year-old women get depressed? Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I appreciate my family because they include my dog and everything as if he's my kid. Like, I'm truly grateful, but like, fuck. When is it my turn? And then you it's have New Year's. I'm not going to the club. I'm not doing all that. I want to be home. But like, I want to be home with somebody. But like... She said club. I think she meant she meant club, but she definitely had the streets on her mind. <laughs> have anybody? Nobody's calling me. Nobody's texting me. Nope. I'm celibate, so fuck though. Sure. Like, okay, do I never get a turn again, or like, what the fuck? Is anybody else feeling the struggle during the holidays and in their thirties, or what the fuck? Yo, your mouth is crazy. It's my fault. A lot of it's my fault. Maybe I'm too picky. Maybe my yep. standards are too high. Yep. Like, I could. I guess I could. But, like, fuck that. I bring a lot to the table. And what do you, I... What? What are you bringing to the table? Obviously nothing. If you brought anything to the table that was, that a man actually valued, you'd have a man. You'd have phone calls. You'd have somebody hitting you up for New Year's. But you're obviously worthless to men. Right? You're probably worth a ton to your job, to your boss, to the corporation that you work for, right? You're worth a bunch to them, but you're you're not worth anything to somebody who wants a family. No. <laughs> I Don't hate cry. this time of year now. Don't cry. And it isn't just men like myself who are warning against the dangers of feminism. Other women are waking up and sharing their perspectives. Take a look at this cautionary tale from an older woman who used to be a feminist and deeply regrets it. Buying into this movement was the biggest mistake of my life. Don't buy into the lie that older feminists are happier alone. Trust me, they're not. 11 years ago, I didn't respect my ex-husband's duties because I earned slightly more than him and thinking I could do better, I had an affair with my boss. Wow. I lost my job when our affair became public and was blacklisted in that industry. I never got into a high paying job after that. <laughs> I ruined my family because of my selfishness and because of that, our daughter lost years that could have been spent with her dad. After our divorce, I went back into dating and I never found someone that treated me like my ex-husband did. I got lots of dates and I know you younger feminists would have too. But please remember that there's a big difference with someone wanting to just sleep with you and someone who wants to grow old with you. 
The most valuable asset us women have is our purity. Yep. You can keep lying to yourself and say that your body count doesn't matter, but we all know deep down that it does. Yep, sure does. Now, at 48 years old, I can't see myself ever wow. retiring. I'm alone, and all of my feminist friends that affirmed my affair are no longer talking to me. Right. All I get now are men who are only looking for hookups while my 50 male ex-husband retired and has more money than he could spend for multiple lifetimes and has been building a future with his now 27 female Ooh. wife who is only two years older than our daughter and I am honestly jealous of what she has now. Yep. My daughter met his wife and her half-siblings last weekend and she told me that his wife is a very traditional housewife which I used to despise but now crave. Before we got married, he told me that his goal was to earn a lot of money that could provide for our family so that I won't ever need to work so I could focus on our kid and it used to offend me because as a feminist, I thought I never wanted to just be that and wanted to build something for myself. How? How? <laughs> how? Can you? Can you hear that? Hey, I'm going to take care of everything, all the bills. I want to make a lot of money so all you... You don't have to work. You can just be at home, take care of the kids. Man, I would love to retire right now and just take care of my kid. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I like to do things, right? But a job? A job? Really? Like, no. Nobody wants a job. Nobody wants to have to work to earn money, to be able to just to afford food and electricity and water. Nobody wants to do that, okay? Okay. But men will do that and we will gladly do that because that is our part. If you want to play that part, well, then what are men supposed to do? <laughs> what do you think men are supposed to do? And if, if you think men are supposed to stay at home and do the job that you were supposed to do, I promise you, you will not like that guy. <laughs> you will despise that guy. You will cheat on that guy. You will disrespect that guy all day, every day. For the younger women here, please don't make the same mistakes I did. Don't buy into the hookup culture. The only ones that are benefiting from that lifestyle are men. And, and only the top 1%. Not all men, okay? Not your Tom, Dick, and Harry. Your sandwich maker at Subway, he isn't benefiting from that, okay? I know you'll say that you won't regret it and it's liberating. I get it. I was like that too. The older feminists back when I was younger fed us lies that it is so much happier being independent. But now that I'm older, I now know they only told younger women that so they're not the only ones suffering. It's true that misery really loves company. Remember, most women... Like, they're insufferable. Y'all don't, don't even like each other. Y'all know y'all don't like each other. So why would you listen to most women? As a woman, why would you listen to most women? Especially if they're telling you something, right? They're telling you how to live your life. Telling you this will make you happy, right? Like, there was something that I was once told uh, back in the day. It's like, you know, why would you listen to a teacher in college, right? Who's telling you how to go out and make something of yourself when he isn't doing what he what he's supposedly teaching you how to do you know what i mean like it's difficult to to have somebody as a mentor who isn't living the lifestyle that you want to live so <laughs> take some of that advice right how many more cases do we need to come across before feminists start to wake up this lifestyle and ideology is not making them happy but instead of self-reflecting like this woman they would rather stick their fingers in their ears <laughs> I divorced my husband because I was making a certain amount of money. I divorced my husband because I thought I didn't need him anymore. I divorced my husband because I had this senior position at work and thought I held the same position at home. I divorced my husband because I thought I was better than him because I had my degree now. I divorced my husband because I thought a successful marriage meant I was here and he was down here. That is not success. That's fucking sickness. I found myself divorced and out there looking for love in all the wrong places. And this one and that one and that one and that one and this one and that one. And my body count going up and my value going down. I'm just going to call it like a T.I. is. All the while, my husband done found somebody else building a, a relationship and building a life with them. I should have stayed married to my husband. I felt like I was on this dark road with no street lights, pitch dark, and I couldn't find my way. Body count going up, value going down. This woman made some absolutely brilliant points and I admire the honesty. Younger women should absolutely watch this kind of content, but sadly, I don't see that happening in massive numbers yet. 
The only time a woman will ever really self-reflect is if something bad happens to her. Mm -hmm. Take a look at this feminist who got dumped by a guy who refused to play the whole feminist game anymore. I don't even know this man, and I admire him for spotting the red flags and getting the hell out yep. of there. Yep. Listen to this and tell me what you would do if you found yourself in a relationship with this kind of woman. My now ex-BF dumped me last night because I am a feminist. Straight up. Well, he said it's because I identify as one, and the modern feminism has basically caused the downfall of a ton of things. The family unit and masculinity. And is stupid. And a dirty word. He believes there isn't any gender inequality to nope. speak of and made ton of excuses pertaining to the wage excuses. gap. Before this, we were planning on moving in together in a few months. I thought we were going to build a life together. Then he comes to me and tells me he thinks I'm misinterest, yep. although he didn't use that word, but it's the word he should have used, because I post stuff about dismantling the patriarchy and shit-talking about the dusty white billionaires. Wow. Then he kept talking about how I clearly enjoy more feminine tasks like cleaning and whatnot, and maybe I'd feel less stressed about life if I filled it with those types of tasks like organizing, basically homemaking. He also disagrees with women using the term bad bitch as a power anthem. He says we sound ignorant and dumb. He thinks the use of it is toxic femininity and trashy. He also said he would not raise his daughters to be independent or a exactly. feminist, but instead to need a romantic partner, which is something I vehemently disagree with. We should teach kids to be whole and self-sufficient and fulfilled really? with themselves and choose to have someone be in their life, not need them. Who said this works? Who said this works? Where, where is the research? Where are the studies that say fulfilled with themselves, independent, self-sufficient, not need them? That this, is, this leads to a healthy life, right? And a happy, and a happy life. That's really the key. I haven't actually seen not one solid piece of evidence that says this. This woman is waving more red flags than the Soviet Union. Yep. Who in their right mind would defend using a term like bad bitch as a power anthem unironically? And notice how she corrected his language? This is just a small percent of the headache of being with a woman like this. But the sad thing is, the comments I pulled to show you at the start of the video were from this post. None of the sisterhood came out to actually tell this woman what she needed to hear. I just told her what she wanted to hear and confirmed all of her toxic beliefs to herself. This is how we know she will end up just as sad and lonely as any feminist who fails to change. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Man, y'all were sold a bill of goods. Just straight up. And now we have the internet. We have people talking about this. We have history that's being recorded, right? So we can look back. Y'all got TikTok, so you can go ahead and dump all your emotional garbage on there, and we can dissect the hell out of it. And um, and now we know. We know it's nonsense, right? I'm not saying don't go out and do you. Go ahead. Do you. Go out. Get your bag. Get your money right. Get your education. Become a CEO. Do how you want to do. But just know you can't have it all. You really can't. Some, maybe they get lucky, you know, but most can't. You give away your good years to a corporation, then you're going to spend the rest of the years with regret and, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe you can afford a boat and you can take your dog on yacht trips. I don't know. Hey man, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Man guide always coming through with the uh with the dope content, yo. This is Chill with Bill. I'm out of here. Peace.